I, I left the immigration battle for five years of my life. This is when I knew God was real. I'm trying not to cry about this mm. because this was a very tough part of my life. Um, I was in San Diego and uh, I was denied. I'm Canadian. I had all the proper documentations. Mm -hmm. I have an immigration lawyer. Shout out to Josh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, everything was properly done right. But during this time, this was when we had the 9-11, uh, the, the mm -hmm. all these other things that are changing that I can't ignore, external forces. And it affected everybody to a even a micro level like myself. Even as I'm not I'm not from a third world country. I'm not from I'm not mm -hmm. a refugee. I am a Canadian citizen. So in that regard, I felt like I was targeted and mm -hmm. I was denied. And this was the fight for my life, aside from the financial burden of it and the back and forth. Uh, I was denied twice. The second one, I'm going to retell this story. I was put in a room, my ex-husband was in another room, and mm -hmm. as I was sitting in there, and they played good cop, good cop, bad cop, and they brought in my own person that spoke my language to see if they can just befriend me, and mm -hmm. it was all st strategy, but if you are telling the truth, the truth doesn't need, you know, justice. It doesn't need to be defended on. Yeah, they, you don't have to defend the truth, so that's kind of what I gathered from that was... It was the longest interrogation of my life. I think I was in that room for eight hours. And my lawyer was waiting the whole time, left, and then when I came out, I felt defeated. Mm -hmm. Like, absolutely exhausted. Mentally, spiritually, emotionally exhausted. This is a really powerful story. This is when I really made peace that I know God was mm -hmm. got my back. And I came out of there and... and my ex-husband, I can see from the, the video, was slamming the table. He was so, mm -hmm. like, pissed. Came out, it was just, like, silence. And then the lawyer comes up to me, and I was holding tears. And he says, listen, it's not good, but it's not bad. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Give me the bad. And he says, it's not good, it's not bad. They can't make a decision today. They were supposed to make a decision that day. That was the second thing. And he says, if they deny you for this, we can go to the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't have any more fight left in me to go all the way to the Supreme Court. I'm going to have to rethink. And that meant everything I built again is going to be gone. I'm going to restart somewhere else. That seems to be the pattern, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... But I, something in me told me, I'm like, okay, it's not a no, but it's not a yes. And I said, did they tell you, did they give you any kind of inclination when they're going to make this decision? They said they're going to deliver the letter personally to your home. And I was like, when? And he says, we can't know that. So I was just kind of like feeling really hopeless, mm -hmm. like really like ready to throw the towel. I was so exhausted. Financially, it was draining. So I, I you know, I went home and you know, dealing with, uh, you know, my ex-husband at the time, he didn't mm -hmm. handle it well. So he was just slamming doors and just not, it's like, like, like our life's on hold. He's right. It was on hold. Mm -hmm. But deep down, I was free, though, in my mind and my soul that I knew that, that this is just another step of the, the pain that I needed to overcome. But it was just, I, when I went home and I walked in my house, I felt like this looming dark clouds was on top of my house. Like, I just felt that dark, dark energy. And I looked at my son. He was young at the time. Mm -hmm. And I said, there's no way I'm going to stay and be miserable and continue to, you know, I, I, I just literally just left the house. And mm -hmm. my husband went into the room, slammed the door, and I just went in my car and I, I buckled my kid in the, the car, and then I finally saw the, the steering wheel in my car, and I sat there, and I stared at the steering wheel. And I don't know why, but at that moment, I said, Jesus, take the wheel. I just literally verbalized that, and I said, and I cried so hard. I put my head down on that steering wheel where I'm just, <sighs> like, it's that deep cry, you know, as in, like, I gave it the best fight I could. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not able to... to uh, do it anymore. I'm tired. And then I forgot my son was in the back of the car and he goes like this with, with a little tissue. He's like, mommy, mm. don't cry. Here you go. And I'm like, I cried some more because I'm just like, oh gosh, I'm falling apart. Right. And so, um, I also said at that moment, I said, fine, I accept my, 
I accept my destiny. I accept my faith, like fate. If this is mm-hmm. it, this, if I have to go back to Canada, so be it. If I got to have to make a life again over there, I'll do it. If this means like separation from my marriage, because my now it, it's so complicated, right? Mm-hmm. I was just, everything was just like, oh my gosh, where do I go from here? I don't have the solution. And that was the moment where I said, I accept, I surrender. I literally said that. I accept, I surrender what you have for me, God, because I think that you have a, a plan for me, although I'm not really, I'm, I'm really in pain and I'm hurt about this, what's going on right now. Um, but just for today, I said, just for today, can you just make me feel loved? Can you just make me feel like I'm not alone? I am mm-hmm. broken. I literally said that. I'm so broken. I don't know how to go about this. I've fought this far too long, five and a half years. So I went to Rubio's. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I ventured with my son because, you know, Rubio's, and this was in La Jolla. And I walked in there, and um, it was crowded. And then the only table I could find at the time was a four-seater table. Now I have a little baby, so I felt, not that I was trying to be selfish, but, you know, I kind of like the, the extra room. I don't have to be so close to people. And I sat down, and I remember, like, a group of kids, and, you know, there was some alcohol in there, and they said something really not nice. And it says some people, they're talking about me, some people do not have consideration and they take a four seater chair when there's only two of them. And I was like in my ready battle mode. I'm like, wipe my tears. I'm like, excuse me, (laughs) what's your problem? You know what I mean? Like, um, and then they laughed at me and I was just like, I was, I felt this little. And I sat down and I shrunk in that chair even more because I was going through a lot already. And I looked at the corner of my eye and there was this woman, she, she had like an aura about her. She had a glow and she was uh, mulatta. So, mm-hmm. you know, um, curly hair, just gray and just staring at me intently with the kindest eyes. Like it, it almost like bothered my soul. Cause I'm like, why are you being, what? it's like undressing me, you know? And, and then she looked at me and she smiled and, and then I was like, like, look away because, please, I'm a hot mess. Do not look at me. And then I looked up and she was right here in my face. And I was like, like, taken back. But there was something so different about her energy, about her demeanor, and the way she was looking at me as if no one else existed in that room, just me. And she says, are you having a bad day, dear? And I looked at her, I'm like... <laughs> Yeah, I am. Like, I'm falling apart, like, basically. But I didn't want to tell her exactly the details of what I was going on. It's a public space. And then I just looked at her, and, and then she grabbed my hand like this, and she petted it like like, 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 a long, like, like my aunt, you know, or my grandmother, mm-hmm. right? And she petted it, and then, she, and then I looked at her and said, what would you do if you can no longer see the light at the end of your tunnel? Translation, I'm, I'm, I'm losing hope. I, I, I can't go through this journey. It's too dark for me. I've been through it. And then she gave me the kindest eyes, and she kneeled down. And this is the most unusual thing in a public space. And my son was just so calm. And, you know, and, and I kind of looked at my kid, making sure he's okay. She kneeled down, and she gave me a kiss on my right cheek and mm-hmm. my left cheek. Then she whispered in my ear. And she said, stop looking for the light. You are the light. You need to trust that you are chosen to have the divine light to go through that tunnel. Everything's going to be okay. I was like, the heaviness in my chest is like lifted. It was lifted. Like everything that I've ever felt, emotional pain, disappointment, abandonment issues, all that lifted. And I was like... Like, like I could breathe. And I looked at her and I said, like, really? And I was like, he's like, yeah, everything's going to be okay. 